Welcome to the RPM Drive App Tutorial. In this video, we're going to walk you through 10 important areas of the RPM Drive App. Part 1 Selecting and Changing the Language. Part 2 Logging in. Part 3 Reviewing and Searching Shipments. Part 4 Scanning VINs at Pickup. Part 5 Reporting Damages. Part 6. Removing VINs from Shipments. Part 7. Managing and Submitting the Pickup Inspection Report. Part 8. Reporting in-transit damage. Part 9. The Delivery Process. And finally, Part 10. What to do if you're going to be late for pickup or delivery. Part 1. Select and change the language for the app. Before you log in to the RPM Drive app, you must select your preferred language. To change the language in the future, go to the Menu feature, tap Edit Profile, and scroll to the Language dropdown to make your selection. After clicking Update, the app will automatically display your new language selection. Part 2 How to Log In now that you have selected your language, it is time to log in and set up your account. Next, choose your country and add your cell phone number that is used for accepted shipments. When you click Next, it will trigger a one-time use code that will be texted to the cell phone number you provided. Enter this six-digit code and you are in. After verification, complete your profile by adding your first and last name, email, and your preferred units of measurement. You can add your email address as a secondary login method as part of our two-factor authentication. Be sure to verify the information on your profile and update any incorrect information. Then, click Update. If you need extra assistance throughout the app, you can choose to turn hints on or off by navigating to the menu, clicking Edit Profile, scrolling down, and toggling Show Hints. If you are having issues logging in, contact the RPM team at CarrierDept at LoadRPM.com. That's C-A-R-R-I-E-R-D-E-P-T at L-O-A-D-R-P-M.com or by calling 855-585-1910. Troubleshooting tip. If you are not receiving an SMS code to log in, you can switch to email verification. Click on this box to switch. If you're still having issues, get a hold of us immediately. Part 3. Reviewing and Searching Shipments Great! Now that you're logged in and hopefully had some time to get acclimated with the app, let's move on to booking and reviewing shipments. Shipments can be assigned to you through two methods, self-assignment or through your RPM representative. To self-assign, a shipment must already be covered by yourself or the carrier company. Self-assigned shipments are meant to be a safeguard in situations where a phone number may be mistyped or no phone number is added to the shipment details. If your shipment meets one of these requirements, navigate to the Search tab, click By Load Number, and type in the 10-digital load ID found on the rate con. From here, you can choose Start Shipment, moving the shipment to your Upcoming Shipments tab. When you are ready to begin the pickup process, clicking Start Job in the Upcoming Shipments tab will officially reassign the shipment. RPM representative assigned shipments are processed and manually assigned to you by the RPM carrier team. Once you have a shipment assigned to you, the Upcoming tab in the RPM Drive app will automatically show all upcoming shipments. The app offers you three primary tabs to organize your shipments. 
Navigating to the upcoming tab will display all shipments currently in your name that have not yet started. Be sure to review this section often to make sure all expected upcoming shipments are displayed. If you have multiple upcoming shipments available and want to search through them to find the right one, click the Search tab. From here, you can locate any shipment in your name by load number, origin, or destination, or pick update. From here, you can choose Start Job, reassigning the shipment, and allowing you to begin the pickup and delivery process. When you arrive at the pickup location, an automated push notification will be sent to your phone, confirming your arrival. This allows you to begin scanning the VINs associated with your shipment. For security purposes, all shipments rely on geofenced locations that extend to half of a mile radius, meaning you must be at the location in order to begin this step. Troubleshooting tip. Should you attempt to scan a VIN beyond the established geofence parameters, an error message will be displayed, indicating that you need to physically reach the location in order to proceed. If this error occurs, please be sure to enter the half-mile radius or contact RPM for assistance. Part 4. Scanning VINs at Pickup once a shipment is ready to be moved, all vehicles associated with that load will need to be scanned. To do this, click the location under the Current Shipments tab, View Vehicles, and then choose Scan VIN. There are three ways to scan a VIN. Your first option, if a license plate is present, is to scan the license plate on the front or rear of the vehicle. Your second option is to scan a barcode or QR code, if present somewhere on the vehicle. These are typically found in the driver's side door jam or on the driver's side dashboard. Your third option is manually adding the VIN into the app by typing it in. To help ensure accuracy and reduce the risk of error, a manual VIN entry requires three key pieces of information the VIN number, a reason for manual entry, and a confirmation photo of the VIN. Additionally, all vehicles require at least two keys to be available for them to ship. If a vehicle has less than two keys available, you can choose the Less Than Two Keys Contact RPM option to inform our team of the situation. By doing so, an email is sent to the RPM support team, giving us an opportunity to reach out to the customer contact and rectify the situation. Once a VIN is successfully scanned, you will see a blue check mark appear next to the vehicle. Troubleshooting tip. If you see the error, VIN not on the shipment, or are having issues with any VIN, be sure to double-check the correctness of the VIN. If you're still having issues, be sure to contact RPM immediately. Part 5. Reporting Damages If you find any damage on a vehicle for any of the VINs, be sure to report these findings. To do this, choose the appropriate location from your current tab, then the vehicle, and choose Add Damage. Now you can choose the location of the damage on the image, the type of damage, and the severity. You can add multiple pieces of damage by choosing Add More Damages after each submission. Be sure to take photos of any damage you are reporting. Remember to report any and all damage. Doing this prior to loading the vehicle onto the truck helps protect you from possible claims in the future. Part 6. Removing a Vehicle from a Load In a situation where a vehicle needs to be removed from a shipment, navigate to the Current Shipment tab. Select the appropriate location 
then the VIN in question, and choose Remove from Shipment. This allows you to remove specific VINs from your vehicle load inventory. You will use this option in a variety of situations. Selecting Remove from Shipment presents three options. For instance, if you lack the necessary keys or paperwork to move or authenticate the vehicle, you will need to choose the Missing Keys slash Paperwork option. If you are unable to move or use a vehicle, you will need to choose the Inoperable option. For cases where vehicles can't be transported due to space limitations, shipper requests, or other various factors, choose the Unavailable option. These options will give you the opportunity to report on any specific issues picking up the load and should empower drivers to document the circumstances leading up to the pickup. Part 7. Managing and Submitting the Pickup Inspection Report Now that all vehicles are scanned and all damage is reported, it's time to update and submit the Pickup Inspection Report. The first step in this process is to enter the pickup contacts information, including the contact's last name, and email address. In this step, two signatures are required, the pickup contact and your own. Next, you can upload any necessary paperwork, photographs, and documentation for the shipment. This includes photos of the vehicle or photos or scans of the physical paperwork. Click Upload and select the photos that best represent the damage you're including and any appropriate documentation. Once the details, signatures, and documentation have been added, tap the Submit button at the bottom of the screen. Part 8. Reporting in-transit damage By clicking Add in-transit damages within the navigation menu, you will be directed to the dedicated in-transit damage report. Here you can add any additional damages sustained on the road. Once thoroughly reported, it can be submitted, requiring the driver's signature to authenticate. To confirm the successful submission of the in-transit damages, an in-transit inspection report is automatically generated, which serves as tangible verification of the reported damages and their corresponding details. Part 9. The delivery process. As you arrive at the designated delivery location, a push notification will be sent to your phone, accompanied by a request to initiate VIN scanning. Now, click into the appropriate location. Select Scan VIN. From here, the RPM Drive app offers three ways to scan in a VIN the license plate, barcode or QR code or manually type it in. If a license plate is present, your first option is to scan the license plate on the front or rear of the vehicle. Your second option is to scan a barcode or QR code, if present somewhere on the vehicle. These are typically found in the driver's side door jam or on the driver's side dashboard. Your third option is to manually add the VIN into the app by typing it in. To help ensure accuracy and reduce the risk of error, a manual VIN entry requires three key pieces of information. The VIN number, a reason for manual entry, and a confirmation photo of the VIN. Regardless of the method you use, be sure to scan all VINs. Once a VIN is successfully scanned, you will see a blue check mark appear next to the vehicle in the Current Shipments tab. After all VINs are scanned, you will be guided to the Proof of Delivery phase. Your Proof of Delivery, or POD, will require the following information. Delivery Contacts Last Name Delivery Contacts Email Delivery Contacts Signature Your Signature if applicable, 
the upload of all necessary documents. If you have a situation where the delivery contact refuses to sign for the shipment for any reason, you can submit a Refusal to Sign, or RTS. To submit an RTS, leave the delivery contact signature blank when filling out your proof of delivery. Once all fields are completed, press Submit. If all fields, including signatures, are filled out, your screen will now display a congratulations message signaling the successful completion of the load. If there is a refusal to sign, you will be prompted with a pop-up alert. Choosing Yes sends an email to the RPM operations team, where we will reach out to the delivery point of contact and help determine the reason for refusal. Part 10. What to do if you're going to be late for pickup or delivery. If you are going to be late at either pickup or delivery, be sure to identify this within the RPM Drive app. Simply select I'm going to be late in the shipment details. You will have four options to choose from. Mechanical issues, weather, not yet loaded, and unspecified. Once this is done, a delay report will be uploaded to RPM and sent to the carrier owner's email address. That's all for now. If you have any additional questions or need further help, please reach out to RPM's support team at carrierdept at loadrpm.com. Thank you for using the RPM Drive app.